This is an overview of the Alcatel-Lucent 8028 telephone. It also has a digital version called the 8029, which is identical in features and functions. Today we'll go over the hardware, and then we'll get into the features and usability of the station. So as we look at the phone, we're just going to work our way from left to right. Here on the far left side, we have a 3.5mm headset jack. This is for any external headset you might want to use on the phone. We also have the handset here. Handset can go off hook. You'll notice that the phone will give you a prompt on the screen itself. And these features that appear here are very based on the call state. Now, as we work our way across, we also have the traditional dial pad with the alphanumeric keys. And below that, we have two keys right here. We have the off hook and the on hook button. Down here, we have the mute key. So if you are speaking on the handset or on the speaker phone, it'll mute the station so that a person on the other end can't hear you. Another feature that can be enabled using the mute key is auto answer. If the mute key is activated while the station is idle, the phone will automatically answer incoming calls after it gives a burst of notification tones. So if I activate the mute key and dial the station, and there you see I'm on an active speaker phone call without touching the station. Next we have the minus and plus keys that control the volume level, as well as adjusting the contrast of the LCD display. We'll get into that a little later. Now next we have the speakerphone key. As so you press that, you get a nice blue LED. Activate the speakerphone. You, you can hear the dial tone, and the blue light above that key is eliminated. Go back on hook. The next button we have here is the hold key, which allows you to take an active call and place it on hold while you go and get additional information or make another call. After that, we have the transfer key. This allows you to take a call that you're on and transfer it to another extension or another group or another number off-premises. Following the transfer key, we have the redial key, which has two features. A short press will redial the last number called. on hook there. Now a long press will pull up the redial list and it will display a list of the ta last 10 numbers dialed from this station. You see here we only have two numbers that have been dialed, an external number and an in internal number. You can scroll through to choose the number we'd want to call back, select OK, it makes the call for us. Next key is the info key, which is very helpful if you don't know what a particular key that's programmed on the phone is. So if you press the info key, followed by any key you have questions about for this one. It says this is call key number 37, a call key named Buxton, calling the, the employee named Buxton. So here you can program name and number for that key if you wanted to do so. Another example here, let's do info hold. Now we know that's the hold key, but we also get a display here that says it's a manual hold key. Now, of course, the C key that I just used is the cancel key, which takes you back one level in the menu structure. So if we, like we did last time, info hold, we're shown the manual hold key on here, press the cancel key, takes us back to the main menu. Next to the C key is the navigational array. This allows me to navigate within the screen. So you notice I have multiple tabs across the top, info, menu, all the way to the right here, we have ACD. We'll get into those a little later. I can also use the navigational array to scroll vertically. So if I scroll down here, you'll see I have a number of speed dials that are already programmed into the system here. You see this dot in the middle shows where vertically I am within that screen, so it, it helps you from getting lost in there. If I keep scrolling down, you see I have blank keys here. This, this ellipses indicates that the, the key has not been programmed yet, so I can program a speed dial or a feature key in there. You have a total of 40 keys, including these four at the bottom here that you can program. So there's a large number of speed dials and other one-touch features you can program in here. The button at the bottom right is the mailbox access key. When I press that, it gives me a display of all the instant messages, voicemails, missed calls that I've, I've taken at the, the station. If I had any voice messages here, I could go ahead and select the voice message enter my password and it would play the voicemail for me. 
The three keys on either side of the soft display are feature keys, so whatever line is next to that key or whatever feature is next to that key is what will be activated. The screen can be customized, so right here you see we have an empty key, you can add another speed dial key to that or a feature key, uh, whatever you'd like to add there. The QWERTY keyboard is a unique feature to the Alcatel Lucent phones, and it can be helpful for a number of features such as the dial by name function, which allows this desk phone to operate much more like your cell phone, and that you can dial a coworker by their name instead of by a number. So as you see here, I can just go on, dial a letter B, for example, okay? Now we have all the, uh, the employees starting with B. You can drill down more by adding additional letters in here, okay, B, I, now we only have all of Bill's numbers. Office number, select OK, makes the call for us. You have reached the mailbox of Bill Bufford. <laughs> to program a key, you simply first choose the key you'd like to assign. This key is empty. We're shown a name and number to assign to the key. I'm going to name a speed dial icon. The shift key, hold that down, I. OK. The name is accepted. Now choose the number. Nine for an external line. One, nine seven two, nine two nine, ninety one hundred. Select OK. The number has been accepted. Clear out to the main menu. You now see ICON is listed as a speed dial number. Now if you press the ICON key, it will connect the call. Thank you for calling ICON Voice Network. We can also be read. Now if we'd like to program a speed dial for an internal number, we can do that too. We'll scroll down to an open key. We'll select where we'd like to place it. The number we're going to use for this one, I know the extension number for TESS happens to be 2330. So I'll enter the number as such. Press OK. The number is accepted. I can now name the key. TESS. Shift. Use the QWERTY keyboard. Select OK, and that number has been accepted. If I clear out to the main menu, I now have, if I scroll down, I now have test listed as a speed dial. If we'd like to delete the icon speed dial button, we simply press the info, select the key, and go into the name, hit clear, OK, that clears the name. Go to the number here, clear the number, select OK. Change has been accepted. You can go out to the main menu. The key is now clear. A blank call key. To make a call, I can either make an internal call, which typically uses a three or four digit extension number, or I can make an external call, which usually means I have to dial 9 to tell the system I'm dialing outside the office. To make an internal call, I can simply dial the extension and away I go. So you can see Dave Angus is alerted. I'll answer on his station. And the call is connected. Now to dial an outside line, I need to start by dialing 9 followed by the number I'd like to reach. I'm going to dial the icon main number, so 9. Thank you for calling Icon Voice Network. You can also be reached at Icon Voice Network. And the call is completed. You may speak your party's name at any time, or dial their extension. If you make a call to a busy extension and you want them to call you back as soon as they're free, there's a feature you can use called Place a Callback Request. To do that, we'll place a call to a number that I know is busy. As you can see, Dave Angus is, is already on a call here. It says, please wait. If I select Callback, it says, booking is accepted. You hear a tone there. That means as soon as Dave hangs up the call he's currently on, 
I'll get a notification that he is available. For example, when I end the call that Dave is on at his station, I'll get a notification from my station that I can ring him. So now I can take the phone off hook and a call to Dave is made automatically. Now to place a call on hold, I'll ring the extension here so we can place a call on hold. Use the call pickup key. Now from here to place the call on hold, I select hold. And that call is placed on hold. You can see there's a change in my icon right here, showing that I have a call that's placed on hold. Now to pick the call back up, I select the music note, and the call is back in conversation. Now if I'd like to put this on hold and place a second call, select hold, and now from here I can just dial the number that I'd like to call. Extension 2817. Answer that call. And as you can see, we now show the active call here. And a second call, this music note here, shows that a second call is on hold. We can use the navigation array to tab over to this. And you can see Angus Dave is on hold. Now if we want to toggle between the two calls, so currently we're on this active call here. If we want to toggle over to, the, over to Dave, I select answer. I'm now on an active call with Dave Angus. If I want to swap back over to the second call I placed, I tab over, select answer, and now I'm on that active call. If we want to transfer a call, we have two options. We can make a blind transfer, which transfers the call directly. There's no interaction with the second party that you're transferring the call to. Or a supervised transfer, which allows you to speak to the person you're transferring the call to before it goes through. It allows you to give them some details on who's calling or what they're calling about. So we'll call the station here. Answer. We're in an active conversation here. So if we want to transfer this as a supervised transfer, for instance, we hit the transfer key. Dial the extension that we want to transfer this to. I'm going to transfer it to TESS. This is Ted. Hey, TESS, it's Teddy. I just want to transfer this call through to you. Okay. Press the transfer key a second time. The transfer is accepted, and TESS has the call. So if we wanted to do a blind transfer and, and didn't want to speak with Tess or the, the second party before we transfer the call through, we would simply press transfer immediately after dialing her extension. So for instance, call the station, answer the call. A blind transfer, we simply hit transfer, the extension, and transfer. It's transferred straight away. To demonstrate conferencing two calls, I'm first going to make a call to the Dave A extension. Answer that phone. We're now in an active conversation with Dave A here. So if I want to conference a second number, I select this conference key. And from here, I dial the number I want to conference. Or that second call here. So now I'm in an active conversation with the second call. If I want to conference the two, conference again, I'm now in an active call between Dave A and the second number that I dialed. You can see the icons at the top of the screen here show I have two active calls. To forward a station, First, you select the forwarding key, which is this top right-hand key. 
on the display. There is no forward currently active. So if I want to send to an immediate forward, I select immediate there, the destination, I dial the number that I'd like to forward this to. And hit OK. Forwarding has been accepted. So now if I dial this phone from the Dave A extension, it will forward over to the number that I programmed in. As it does. You can tell that the phone is in a forwarded mode because the icon up here has changed. So to take the phone out of forwarding, select the key again. Scroll down to Cancel, and select Cancel. We got a text confirmation, and the forwarding icon is now back to the original state. Let's take a look at managing messages. If we hit our messaging key, we're presented with a screen that gives us our voicemail messages, uh, a call history to the station, a list of the IMs or instant messages sent to the station, and an option to send an instant message from the screen as well. So if we want to see our call history, we select the calls, and from here we need to enter the password for the station. After putting in the password, we're taken to a call history screen. Now you can see at the top we have a tab for missed and all, which we can use the navigation array to scroll between the two, as well as up and down. So to see, here's all the missed calls we have. and an all call history. In this all call history you can see any numbers that aren't highlighted. A bold number indicates that that was a missed call. You can also tell from the icon over here that we have an incoming call, with the arrow showing, pointing down. The circle is a completed call, the X is a missed call. We can also see if we scroll through the history, an up arrow shows outgoing calls. Again, the circle means it was completed and the X indicates that the call was not completed. If we'd like to go through to the missed calls and call back the last number that we missed the call from, select OK. We get the call history, little details on that, and we can either call or send an IM. We select call. And the call is completed. Now if I'd like to go into my voicemails, Select the message key. I see I have one voice message. Select that key. Here's the details. Select OK and play the message. This is a test voicemail. You can select erase and that erases the message. We now see that our voicemail inbox is empty. Let's see, it takes us back to the home screen. To change the ringtone or the ringing volume level, we use the navigation array to scroll over to this menu tab. And we see here we have settings, select settings, and set. And we're presented with the ringing menu here. So if we select ringing, here we can change the ringtone for external calls as well as in internal calls, silence, and then the volume level. So for instance here, let's, let's uh, select external melody. We can scroll through the available ringtones. Hit OK to select. And that's been accepted. See back out to the main menu. Now selecting the ringing volume is in the same location as the ringtone. We'll use the navigational array to scroll over to menu. Hit settings. We'll go to set and ringing. And from here, we can select the level. Plus and minus keys are used to adjust the volume, all the way down to low, to a maximum level. 
and hit OK to set. The ringing's been accepted. And hit the C button back out to the main menu if you'd like. To adjust the screen brightness, start by moving over to the menu tab, going to settings, set, local menu, display. From here you see we have a brightness option, and from here we can use the plus and minus keys to adjust how bright the display is. Select OK. The first time you set up your mailbox key, you'll be prompted to enter the system password. This is the password you'll get from your installing distributor. First, we'll press the mailbox key. You are connected to your voice mailbox. You will be asked to enter your personal settings. Enter your password. Enter your new password. Now enter the new password you'd like to use to access your voice mailbox. Password is one four seven eight eight eight. Confirm. Press pound to cancel. Press star. Record your name now. You speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you have finished. Teddy. Play your recording. Press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. Teddy. Play your recording. Press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. You speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you have finished. Teddy. Play your recording. Press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. In addition, we can use the prompts on the screen here to listen. Teddy. Play your recording. Press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. Or to record it again. Please speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you have finished. Teddy. Play your recording. Press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. Pound to confirm. Accepted. We can see it's empty. 